Hey everyone, Zenzo with Tazawa Tanks. Now you guys have asked me before about flower horns. You've asked questions about flower horns on various videos. You've asked me to keep flower horns and I've never kept a flower horn before in my life. I've kept lots of different fish, hundreds of different types of fish, but never a flower horn. So I thought what I would do while I'm here at Aquashella is talk to some people that know a whole lot more about flower horns than I'll know ever, maybe. And uh, so yeah, they've got a lot of flower horns. They had the flower horn competition. So we've got Michael here. Michael is with? Michigan Tropicals. Michigan Tropicals, which is actually a store that carries Aquarium Co-op products. And we also have Kai, who is a judge for the uh, Flower Horn Association. So maybe we'll ask them a couple of questions about like flower horn care, small tank size, tank mates, all that kind of stuff. So uh, let's hear from the experts. All right, so the first question that we have is, um, for someone that's never kept a flower horn before, what's a good starting point? Tank size, bare bottom, by themselves, like what do they need to know? Well, I mean, honestly, for a starter, you're gonna be getting from the store, uh, probably in between a two inch fish and a four inch fish. That's gonna be the most commonly sold size. Of course, some stores do sell bigger. Um, you just wanna make sure that, that that fish is adequate to grow. Um, and grow to what it needs. Now, if you're doing it just to keep the fish, it's much different than if you're trying to compete with the fish. Um, the longer the tank, the longer the body may elongate. If you give it more of a cubed tank, that's a little bit taller, then you're gonna get a little bit shorter and a little bit taller of a flower horn. And that is not normally how fish react towards tank size, um, but cubes, hexes, um, any sort of cylinder tank is really good for a flower horn that you're trying to grow out to compete with. Um, the flower horn can be kept just like any other South American cichlid for the most part, minus its tank mates. Um, they can be very, very aggressive. Most people like to keep them uh, by themselves. By themselves. Sure. Yep, unless it's with a female from a young age um, and they've grown up together. And even then, once they start to breed, you may get some aggression. And, and they'll still beat it up. Yeah, yeah. They'll, still, they'll still beat up the female, or the female will still beat up the male. So that's when you're going to want to um, use a divider or some sort of a uh, breeding uh, net, which the breeding net that I speak of is different than what we're used to. We use breeding nets that are uh, a cylinder, and they drop down in the tank generally over top of a breeding cone if you're trying to do it for uh, breeding, um, breeding purposes. Um, even knowing the male can't get directly to the eggs, they still can be fertilized if it's, if it's within the same tank and they're very close. And what tank size would you want them in? Um, tank size, these right here are uh, what, 30, 30 gallons or 30 so? Gallons, yeah. So I would say double this. Okay, if so you like were, a 60 gallon cube? Yeah, or? if you were doing a 60 gallon cube, yep, 75 gallon tank. Okay. If you were going with the regular rect uh, rectangle tank. Okay. Yep. And how um, big do flower horns get, generally? Uh, it depends on the species, but they can get all the way up to 14, 14 inches plus, inches, 16 okay. inches, yep. All right. I mean, so. uh, if you want to do a shortcut, you know, usually you can begin with a 10 gallons. Uh, yep. You could also uh, do a shortcut and get a 40 breeder, so you don't have to be constantly uh, changing your tank. Uh, you could do bare bottom. Uh, it's up to you, whatever's easier for you. It really depends if you want it to be a, a nice uh, showpiece in your house. You can put some decorations, you know, but if you're just grooming it for a competition, I would go with uh, bare bottom. Now will they destroy really? decorations? The yeah, destroy they'll plants? rearrange it, they'll dig, they'll it's chew your plants okay? out. What's that? Yeah. Is substrate okay? Yeah, it's I mean, okay, but sometimes they tend to, I don't know, it depends on your feed. Okay. If you get sinking pellets, sometimes they tend to swallow the, swallow the rocks. Swallow the rocks. Uh, and then what do we feed them? We generally feed them like a high protein diet, not too crazy, uh, because they do actually have an immune system, or not immune system, sorry, a digestive tract similar to a koi. Okay. So you could feed them sort of uh, Hikari koi foods. You feed them specific flower horn foods. Like uh, Coxzilla, CZ, CZ yep, products, yep. Yeah. there's a few different types of uh, companies out there that make and, and specify on flower horn foods, which makes it easier for the Aquarius to just buy that specific food and know that they're not changing foods a lot. Because changing foods too fast is kind of like a, it, it, it does, they don't want it. Yep. Okay. And, and sometimes we do have the occasional blood worms, you yep. know, chopped up. Uh, krill or whatever, uh, treats, you know, like yep. Yep. frozen food is okay. 
What are some desired traits when someone's shopping for a flower horn? What should they be looking for? If they've never bought one before, they're going to a store that has flower horns, what are they looking for? If they're looking for just a home piece not to compete with, something that looks healthy, not ripped up fins, something that is just generally something in color that they like, yeah, honestly. Yeah, as long trying as to get the, yeah, the vibrant colors. Yep, if it's make sure the fish is trying to attack your finger. <laughs> okay. Make sure it's trying to go at you. Uh, make sure it's not, you know, sulking in a corner. So you, you want, want an like aggressive an active, one. Aggressive fish. Yes, okay. yes, exactly. All right, All right cool. Yep. What are a few other things that someone new to flower horn should know about these very unique, cool looking fish? Maybe not for everybody, but what are some things like, if you said, like, you must do these three things if you're going to keep a flower horn. Right. Uh, make sure you, you know, spend a little time to uh, uh, kind of play with it. You know, you can put a little uh, mirror or okay. uh, anything to stimulate is, uh, you know, uh, being aggression, uh, the, uh, being aggressive. Uh, okay. You can you can uh, use a mirror. You can use some uh, grooming toys like these. So it's kind of like a beta where you can use the mirror. Exactly. Kind of yes, yes. You can okay. you can try to use this and make right. him angry and color up. Yep. We so he you. Won't, oh. won't get bored. We can actually uh, show you yeah, here with this guy. We'll show you with the, with the yeah, grand, we'll with that. the grand champion here. All right. So yep. Oh, he's going after that guy. Now he's gonna. You're gonna notice him change colors too. And the toy actually helps grow the head. It's one thing that helps grow the head. Oh yeah. He's like, you know, wow. five minutes, three minutes. Uh huh. Just don't overdo it because he'll just stare at it when he gets used to it. So that's yeah. like exercise yeah, and stimulation. Exercise, yeah. Cool. That is cool. Yep. So what does it mean to be a grand champion? <laughs> it means that he's won uh, points. Okay. In the point system, he's won more than everybody else. Okay. So that means he's the overall winner. So Got uh, it. like this fish had the most points in this category. Um, he had. Well, you're actually a judge, so you can actually explain it. Yeah, a bit uh, like uh, every every first placers on each category, uh, we uh, compare it, and who has the highest points? Uh, that's uh, going to be our uh, grand champion, just like this fish. It only went through a little difference. Uh, the other fish is also good, but it has a little rip on the tail, so okay. you dock those points out, uh, you deduct them. And then, how much uh, does the flower horn cost normally for maybe not like a grand champion? Right. Just okay. a regular flower horn in uh, a fish just store like, a Just like other fish, it could be $12, it could be $1,200. Uh, $1, okay. it, it's, it's really subjective. Uh, you, can, you can also breed and you can name your price, but I mean, if a person really likes it, there's no stopping him on buying it. But, yeah. you know, for, uh, for beginners, you know, some you can see like fry for $20, yeah. uh, 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 standard uh, SRD flower horn would be like 50 bucks. Yep. I would say. And what about an average lifespan? Um, if you're but. not grooming, because when it comes towards grooming for competition, that does reduce some uh, some years on the fish. And breeding. Yep. Yeah. And breeding also reduces the years. But if you just want a fish that you can call your water puppy, that you can play with and love and cherish every day, you see it. You can get upwards of 10 plus years. Okay. It, it just depends. Like but other if, large cichlids. Yep. Is, is yeah. Right. You you start putting them into that that rough and tough, playing with them constantly, um, warmer temperatures, lights on longer. Um, you could knock it down to anywhere between five and seven years or even less, just depending how hard you train him. Because yeah. it, it is it is tough on him, but over the years go on, yeah, especially, I feel like he gets yeah. stronger, actually. Yeah. So especially uh, breeding also takes a lot. Uh, yeah. Takes a lot off the fish, but now, we used to have fish that live for like 10 years easy. Yeah. But some of these fish, uh, some are too inbred too, so yep. some of them tend to die earlier. And uh, I mean, if you saw the flower horns from way back compared to now, they're oh, way bigger, like huge right. monsters. 100% so. different, yep. Great. It's like it's like on a big serving plate like right. that. Another thing that might be informative for some people that don't know much about flower horns would be is that these are not a wild caught fish. Right. These were never ever in the wild. They were genetically man-made by breeding yeah, multiple crosses. different types of crosses of cichlids. Central American cichlids. Exactly, yep. Red devils, Midas, Midas um, yeah. Trimac, all kinds of different ones, even parrots. Uh, some, Texas some of them have Texas, Texas, yep, Texas. Okay. Yep. Some have Vieja in it. 
Right. Yep. They got Texas. Uh, they got uh, Black Nasties Black and Nasties. Blood Parrots. Or There's all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. All, you know, it's all their proprietary uh, mix. I, yep. I, you awesome. Know. Of course, they're not going to tell us. No, they won't say. Well, thank you guys so, so much, much for uh, teaching us about flower horns. Thank you. And if you guys want to learn more, there is the uh, United Flower Horn Association, and you can also see them at shows. So, yep. awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hopefully, you enjoyed this information about flower horns. I thought that it would be better to ask some people that actually keep flower horns, breed them, show them, and judge them at shows versus me just, you know, doing my research and trying to uh, share what I've learned about them. So, I've never kept a flower horn before. I don't know if I ever will. People have asked me to do it, but I may or may not, not sure. But anyway, hopefully you found this enjoyable and educational. And if you want to learn about the fish that I keep, then watch this over here. So my editor's like, if you could film anything, please. I'm like, okay. So uh, Matt's probably listening to my B-roll right now. <laughs>